So, just an announcement about our City College Broadcasting Club. It does meet um, every week, technically, or rather every other week. The generalized meeting is every other week, but the officers do meet every week, and it is open to anybody who wants to attend, whether you are a member or not. You, you're not restricted to being an officer. And it is on Fridays from 12.30 to 1 in the Art Extension, room 169. And there is a lot of interest in having field trips, including to local studios, whether they be television or radio. And I'll show also events with regard to fundraising. But and there is a lot of interest and already efforts underway to revitalizing and resuscitating the campus radio station and um, including literally physically revamping it. And if you can make it to the if you can make it to the events that or rather at the meetings that would be lovely because this is really about the members and how we can really cater to you and cater to our interest and cater to a unified goal of really um, focusing on broadcast and potentially we in the future would be streaming it live if we can and if you also have any interest in social media that that interest would be welcome and we encourage you to bring it yeah guys please show up it's a cool group Everybody's real interested, like the couple of, or I think we have about 17 people so far, 17, yeah. 17 to 19 people that have showed up the first two weeks. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of energy. So if you're interested in, in actually starting to put some practice to what you're learning with all the theory in class. And then by the week, mate, we'll definitely feel like fall. No worries. Sorry, continue. No, you're good. That's essentially all I had. I was just saying. I mean, if you've got some passion to get some things done, it doesn't necessarily have to be radio. I mean, that is a lot of the big focus in the core of the group right now, but we need talent and people who want to get behind all kinds of different media, so. We're over the revival. They're cleaning up and getting the radio station up right now. Great! And if you have talent or interest in web design, that is also very highly encouraged and welcome because we are trying to have one of our lovely members um, build and develop our website as our calling card so that we can reach out to the local media to, to go ahead and execute these site tours and or invite guest speakers. Tons of fun. I'm working on getting Joe Rogan, but it's not going to... Right, okay, so enough with the club. We're going to start. So uh, first of all, news, I'm being evaluated next class. And so uh, that's for tenure. It happens every fall. And so Mike is going to come and give you a questionnaire about what I do while I'm out of the room. And he's going to watch our class. So uh, the more the merrier. But uh, you know, if it's, if it's like this, that's fine too. Um, that's just uh, what it is. And so expect to see another prof in the back. His name is Mike. He's a super nice guy. And uh, okay, plenty of people on chat today. Can anybody um, mod, mod for us? Thanks. With the scripts that we've turned in so far, will we get to look at them and like see where we, or talk about what we could have improved upon or not? Uh, that talk happens in class in front of everybody when you read it out. Okay. If you want, uh, you know, next class, I'm sure Mike would enjoy actually seeing some of you folks with your script read it out. I don't know, Kyle, if you want. Yeah, I'm down. Next class? Okay. The reason, the reason I do the kind of oral critique in front of everybody is that you get everybody else's ideas and impressions. And the other thing is if you see like 10 people's different scripts going on, even if you didn't you know, do a certain thing, you'll see somebody else do it, and then you'll learn from, from what they did as well and what we say about it. So um, that's, that's the way I do it. But then when I grade them, I write back. And if you did read it out in class, it's easier because we've already said a lot. But if you didn't read it out, I write back the basic comments that I have on okay. it. But, you know, it's, it's always easier to feed back in person, and then you get everybody else's, you know, because we got 
some really good input last time from, uh, from other people, so that was with cool. the raps and readers? Uh, no, with the radio features. You, were you present that day? No, oh, that's why. Well, check the stream, because about 10 people read their scripts, and many people did, so you can, you can learn a lot that way. Nick? Is that Mike? Uh, no, Mike is next class. Next class on Thursday. Oh, okay. Thursday, we have a visiting prof who's going to be sitting in the back and handing out a questionnaire and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He often wears a tie. He's <laughs> sort of my age. <laughs> is that a mandatory day? Uh, it's not. The mandatory day uh, is past. That was uh, okay. uh, when we read our radio scripts. Yes, and the next one will come up uh, on our TV package due date, uh, which is, uh, it's due on October 31st, so that's our next mandatory day. Okay, so it, we, do, we do it differently, this class and the other class. So now we're on to video. We're on to writing video scripts. We're starting with news, and then we could go into uh, advertising and corporates that way. So, so they look different. They're written in a different way. And uh, we have two assignments. Long term, I'm going to ask you to take your radio feature and revise it and add a second source and turn it into what's called a television package, which is a longer kind of television report. Uh, that's coming up in, um, let's see, the TV package is due on October 31st, all right? So you have a couple of weeks ahead of you to find your source. Now, I'm thinking about JP, who's basically that story's come to a close because they don't want to provide any more information. So you're going to have to switch to your B story, I guess. If that's, uh, that's sort of the way it goes. But, uh, yeah, so um, and we can talk if you want about about that. Um, immediately uh, on October 24th, so next Tuesday, is uh, a shorter script done out of stuff that I'm going to give you today. And it's for a different type of television news story. It's called a VOSOT, or V-O-S-O-T. So we're going to talk about that today, and I'll explain the assignment to you. And you'll find that, like the reader in the rap, it doesn't take an enormous amount of writing. So that's why that one is due next Tuesday. And then later, on October 31st, will be your rewrite of the radio feature. OK, so we're talking about two things. Let me put them up here. So uh, what's called the VOSOT is due October 24th. And the TV package, which is a rewrite of your feature, that's due on October 31st, OK? So I'll talk about this on Thursday. And this one we'll tackle today, OK? <clears throat> so I know it's hard to keep track of two things at once, but we do it in BCST 120, so we can do it here. Kyle. We, but just real quick, I know you were going to talk about it Thursday. We're not essentially writing a whole new piece for TV. We're going to kind of take what we already wrote. Yeah. Do it for TV. Exactly, and it's going to be longer. And it, you, I asked for a second source. So in your case, you know, you've got a profile going, but you'll you know who else you can talk to. So you should talk to them now, so you can integrate some more of that. Yeah. So you you know the 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 basic stuff that you're rewriting is going to be uh, you know what you wrote for your radio feature, and then you're also you can use other stuff from that interview that you did. Um, to flesh it out. And when I say adding a second source, it means adding somebody else that you've talked to. Or it could be a written source with more uh, context for the story as well. Uh, so basically, it makes it bigger when you integrate more information, another person, another point of view. We'll talk about that next. Well, whatever, Cedar, yeah. Um, could the, so could that second written source be like a newspaper article written about the person? Who if it provides more of context, but if it's a profile and you can at all get in touch with, you know, another person who knows the person or someone who's done something with them, or something, okay. that would, you know, be equally good, if not better, as a primary source. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so next class we'll talk about that, that, that rewrite and where that's going. 
that one involves your, your reporting, right? Versus what we're doing today is like an exercise due next Tuesday. It is uh, from information that I'm giving you. So okay. That's it. All right. Um, so you're going to give us the article? The or article? Well, like in fact. The story? Yes, exactly. Okay. Story and video. Pardon me? Do we need to make our, uh, turn our radio scripts edgier? Edgier? Can we, can we slip, put a little edge in there? Perhaps. But let's talk about those on Thursday while Mike is present too. He can hear about the edge. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's look first of all at uh, the VOSOT assignment and what it is and hopefully we can locate one because uh, I don't have my video example with me today. First, let's look at a little news and we'll hope that we get, uh, we, we get a VOSOT pretty soon. There's, of course, the dang, the dang weather. Let's see if we can get to it. All right, here we go. Of course, the news is going to be nonstop um, fires and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's it, right? That's all it is. Um, I don't even know if, I think this is playing and it's just an extremely long file that they're streaming here. Uh, let's see if it does stream out that way. Three, three basic types of television story. The first one, just like in radio, is called a reader. And as you can imagine, it's just the anchor telling the story to the camera. There may be some over-the-shoulder graphics or something like that, but that still qualifies as a reader, okay? Then there's another type of story called a VOSOT, which stands for uh, Voice Over Sound on Tape, okay? And then the thing we'll talk about next class is called a package. So the VOSOT is like a wrap. Uh, Good, 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 good. That's not bad at all. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that, but we'll explain it. But what we would have called an actuality in radio reporting is now called a sound on tape. So your sound bite in television reporting is called a sound, it's called sound on tape, abbreviated as SOT. And voiceover means that the anchor is talking and you see full screen pictures. Uh, while the anchor is talking, he's voicing over the pictures that are on the screen, okay? So in the reader, you just see the anchor talking about the story. In the VO type of story, the anchor talks over pictures. In the VOSOT, he talks over pictures, and then at some point, you get full screen somebody saying something, an interview clip, basically a sound bite. So that's your VOSOT. The package, more complicated, we'll talk about it next class. So now we are digging through this, hoping to find a Vosad or something. And that breaking news this morning continues to be the fires across the North Bay. We've got a couple images here for What's you wrong? on the left. I know full screen. Firefighters making progress Sorry. on the wildfires in the North Bay. And on the right of your screen, a new wildfire, this one breaking out in Santa Cruz County, forcing evacuations this morning. That fire broke out about 11 o'clock last night, and firefighters are reporting that it started as a structure fire and then spread to some nearby vegetation, and that fire is now burning up the mountainside, burning on Bear Creek Canyon Road right near Boulder Creek. Firefighters say it is spreading very fast. An evacuation center has been set up now at Boulder Creek Elementary School. Again, that the very latest out of Santa Cruz this morning, but they're working feverishly to try and stop that fire in its tracks. Just a few of the streets that have been uh, shut down and evacuated this morning. We have Deer Creek Road, Ron's Road, Don's Road, Lost Valley Road, uh, Favre, or Favre Road, and Oak Ridge. Those streets now evacuated this morning. You can see why in that video. Flames beginning to get larger and larger as it burns more and more of the trees there on the mountain. A tense morning this Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. I'm James Fletcher. And I'm Robin Winston. We so that was a voiceover, right? We saw they talked and the whole time we saw pictures while they voiced over. Okay. I'm not sure how much of this will get, uh, whether they just are sort of 
basically riffing in front of the camera or if we'll see a more scripted. We have a crew on the way to the fire in the Santa Cruz Mountains and we will get the latest for you as soon as they get there. All right. Uh, first, though, we do want to update you on the fires that are burning in the North Bay. That's what we've been following for more than a week now. This morning, more evacuation orders are being lifted as firefighters continue to make progress now battling that firestorm. So we've got the panel on the right with the latest information. The Nuns Fire in Napa and Sonoma counties has burned more than 51,000 acres. It is now 50 53% contained. Uh, so that's some good news there. Again, that's the Nuns Fire really impacting the Sonoma Valley. And the Atlas Fire in Napa and Solano counties has burned just over 51,000 acres as well and is 70% contained. The Tubbs Fire burning in Napa County has burned more than 36,000 acres and it is now 75% contained. And then we have the Pocket Fire that's burning just north of Geyserville in Sonoma County. It has burned more than 12,000 acres and is just 45% contained this and new this morning, evacuation orders, as we mentioned, have been lifted now in the cities of Geyserville and uh, portions now of Healdsburg that were being threatened by the pocket fire. Those <laughs> sections of those towns now being allowed um, or being reopened and folks can start heading back in, which is great news. Yes, definitely. And now we want to get a check of the weather with Andy Hong. We do have some wet weather on the way. We just need a lot and we need it much sooner. Okay. Yeah, we need the weather. Let's see. What we... The county district attorney's office is also keeping a close eye on reports of price gouging. Ron Four has received a few tips from people about hotels and gas stations raising their prices significantly during the fires. The district attorney's office says that so far the businesses in the county have been very supportive and overall uh, pretty generous too, but it will go after those that break the rules. Since the governor declared a state of emergency, it is illegal to raise prices more than 10%. Meanwhile, another big story that we're following for you this morning, jury selection is underway in the Kate Steinle murder case. Jose Garcia Zarada, who also goes by the name Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, is accused of killing Steinle in July of 2015 at Pier 14 in San Francisco. He'd been deported five times, and the shooting sparked a nationwide debate over immigration and sanctuary city policies. The jury will be chosen from a pool of about 160 potential jurors. In the East Bay, we've learned the identity of a 13-year-old boy shot and killed last week in Oakland. The boy was a student at Frick Impact Academy. School officials say he was Anibal Andres Ramirez and lived in Oakland. The shooting happened on Seminary Avenue near Foothill Boulevard on Tuesday night. No word on whether any arrests have been made. San Francisco police are looking for the man they say kidnapped a woman Sunday morning. It happened just before 9 a.m. on Venice Avenue near Post Street. Witnesses say the woman was walking south on Venice Avenue when a Nissan pulled up. According to police, a man grabbed her by the arm, threw her in the back of a car, and then the car took off with the woman inside. No word if uh, the woman has been found. Police do not have a detailed description of the kidnapper. Coming up on the Crown 4 Morning News, our coverage of the North Bay firestorm continues. In fact, coming up after the break, you're going to see how far. So, no, we, so far, we've only had VO. We've had nothing but VO. So oh, there's sound. sound on tape. This one? You think? Yep. I think Probably. that's it. Let's hope so. Now, yeah. can I back up enough? It's like every twitch of the mouse is like two minutes further back. Let's I've see. seen that. Some of the people that are beginning to um, are being allowed to return home were at shelters at American Canyon when word came that the evacuation order was lifted. And obviously, you might imagine they were pretty happy about that. Absolutely. Cron Force Hazik Yoon caught up with one of the former evacuees outside of her home in Calistoga. Calistoga residents are happy to return home now that the mandatory evacuation order has been lifted. How does it feel to be back home? Oh, my Lord, it feels wonderful. It feels so good. When we got the notice yesterday at the, um, the evacuation center in American Canyon, everybody just, all the Calistoga folks went, yay! We were clapping and oh, we were so excited that a lot of people didn't wait to listen to the rest of the news they had to tell us. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you weren't so sure what, were you, you, what you were going to find when you came back home. I know. What are your hopes at this point? Obviously to be able to return home and... Yes, that my home will still be there, that my neighborhood will be there, that my town will be there. I know, I didn't know, but my home is standing. And um, I just said, my neighbors are coming home. My neighborhood is here and my town is still standing. 
Karen's only been home for about 24 hours, and she's already made these heart-shaped messages of gratitude for first responders. We love our first responders. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yes! In Calistoga, Hazik Metyun, Cron for News. Okay, well, we did manage to get a VOSOT, but that's a package. So what happens in a package is you got a reporter, right, talking to the camera. That's called a stand-up. Hi, this is Haziz, whatever, and uh, I'm going to see everyone got home. Evacuation order lifted, right? Uh, then you'll usually, at a certain point, you'll cut to VO. Then you'll get some SOT, sound on tape, which is this dear lady. And we got a whole bunch of SOTs from her. And then at the end, as you heard, uh, we, went, we went back to him. Usually you'd be on camera for uh, the closer, but um, in this case, he closed it off because he's doing all of this from the field, probably just cutting stuff together. So he closed from behind the camera, but you know, this is, it's, it's the lockout from radio, basically. So this is all, I mean, there's, these are not great examples. Uh, they're kind of done on the fly. But I still would like to find you a, um, a VOSOT. So the lockout is done by the reporter. That That's same, correct. The same one that started. Uh -huh. And this is a package. So this is what I'll be talking to you more about on Thursday. Uh, the, the VOSOT story only involves the anchor, right? And uh, so, gee, it would be great if we could find one of these. Uh, maybe just going straight on to... YouTube, there might be a, <clears throat> we might get lucky and just be a Kitty videos. Right, sample Vosat. Cows on this. Let's have a look. It says NBC. Maybe it'll be all right. Let's see. Here's your KDLT Sports. Welcome back. Well, coming off of a bye week, the Jacks of SDSU got back to business Saturday, topping Western Illinois 31 to 10. Sitting atop the Missouri Valley Conference at 5-1, 3-0 and and in the conference. Coach says the Jacks played a complete game, which is exactly what they were looking for. Zenner came through. Uh, we did make some plays throwing the ball. But uh, that's exciting. It's exciting that we can return the open SOT. kickoff and return an interception early in the third period. So uh, that's a complete game, complete uh, effort. We just need to clean up some things, and we will. The Jacks are in Cedar. Fall, Cedar Falls, Iowa next Saturday to take on Northern Iowa. Cool, so that was exactly it. As you can see, you start with the anchor talking. At a certain point, we cut to full screen of the football players running around. There's voiceover, the anchor continues to voice over the pictures. And then finally, there's sound on tape, an interview clip from somebody, a sound bite. That one was a little weird because they started the coach talking for about five seconds or so before they actually cut to the coach in the SOT. The reason for that probably was because they needed to hide an edit in with what he was saying. And so they kept him off screen until they'd managed to do the audio edit and then brought him on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hauling cows crashes. Oh, I don't know. Let's see the second one. Oh my god. A reader is a 10 to 15 second story that the news anchor reads. Well, there's usually some kind of graphic that appears over his shoulder, or a full screen graphic of a map or quote, or a still picture a viewer sent in because the station was too late getting to the story. Then comes the VO. That stands for voiceover, which is a 25 to 35 second story. The text is written by a reporter and read by the anchor, while video of the story or event are shown on the screen. A VOSAT is an extension of the VO. That stands for voice over sound on tape. It begins like a VO, but when the anchor gets to the end of the first block of text, the master control guy switches to a second tape that contains. A short interview with someone who saw what happened, someone who knows someone that this happened to, and is willing to talk on camera. After the sound bite, more video follows, allowing the anchor to wrap up the story. And finally, there's the package. This is a one and a half to two and a half minute story written and thrown together by the reporter. Maggie? It's usually introduced by the reporter on location with a live shot. The reporter introduces the story, then they roll tape. 
B-roll or secondary oh. footage plays Ow. while the reporter narrates the story. Jeez. Often it consists of a stand-up, which is the reporter on camera saying he or she was somewhere when something happened and you weren't. As you can see here, the dead cat mauled by the ferocious dog. And just behind me, the child who sits crying, broken hearted over the loss of his best friend. The package also contains more than one sound bite, usually coming from more than one person. This person either saw what happened, was involved in the incident, or just told the reporter that so they could get on TV. Woohoo! Hi, Mom! And the tape is finished. They cut back to the reporter standing outside a burning building, a sinking ship, or something dramatic like that. Dead cat. Mauled at the paws of a ferocious beast. Steve, Sally. Thank you for that report, Maggie. From beloved pets to patriotic fish, Samantha Gordon is live on the island to tell us about a new government program making our beaches safer for our kids. I don't even understand where they're going now, but they've told us You're four types of stories. Us. Yeah. Go search it yourself, okay? But I think it's a good cautionary tale for students who think they can do great video. It's just kind of embarrassing. You want to watch what you put out there. Okay. However, that was, we. what did we find out? We found out about readers. We found about VOs. We found about VOSOTs. And... We even saw the package, although they just kind of walked it off into something incomprehensible there. All, all of this is uh, summed up uh, in a link on our site, which talks about, uh, first of all, TV terms that you should know when you're writing. So again, this type of script, it has a slug, which remember those are the first three lines above any story. Uh, the reporter who's writing in her car writes a lead, definitely. The lead-in is something the anchor does in order to introduce a story. Uh, but what were we talking about? Story types here. So this is summarized, written down for you. The reader, the voiceover, the SOT, VOSOT, the package. And there's a bunch of others down there that we'll get to at some point. Okay. So those are the different ones. What's this? Oh, okay, an example. So we write these scripts in two columns. We have one column on the left, which shows what's on camera, the video side, and the other column has the audio side, what people say. Okay, and so um, as we go through this, we see basically what's indicated in the video side is really very, basic stuff. Just, you know, you, you don't write an enormous amount of description because this never goes on TV. This is just describing the pictures that the editor is going to cut to the, to the video. Uh, this is what people say, right? So when you hear what people say, it sounds a lot like um, writing for radio too. It's got the same sorts of, uh, of, of conversational style. You know, so here's the anchor. A lack of rain and above average temperatures have many people worried about the possibility of a drought. TV 27's Sherry Ann Jones talked with those planning for the worst. Right, so that was the anchor. Then we cut to Sherry Ann who's on camera. She says, most of the state is in fairly good shape, but some say Northeast Kansas is just a week or two away from officials declaring a drought. It's especially worrisome for those who count on the Republican and Delaware rivers. And then we cut to B-roll here, right? So we indicate that we're going into voiceover. And we indicate that now what we're seeing when we're in voiceover is a nearly dry Delaware riverbed. And then you just keep writing what she says. It's especially worrisome for those who count on the Republican and Delaware rivers. We're even hearing a little bit of the water there. And then we go to the SOT, sound on tape. And it's bare because it's Nancy Bear, who's the acting vice chair. So you say SOT Bear. So now we're full screen on her as she says, the only reason we're seeing any water in the system right now is that temperatures rose rather late in the spring this year. Because of the runoff, we're losing very much needed water. So there's a quick sound bite, SOT. And now we're back to the reporter, Sherry Ann, who's in voiceover, VO, talking over uh, a meter that's measuring the depth of the water such. 
So you can see it's, uh, uh, once you get the hang of it, the two column style, which is what you write in for video news, is, you know, it makes a lot of sense, basically. A lot of it is just like a reader or even the feature, the, the radio feature, but now you're adding a video column and you have to indicate in the audio what we're seeing. It's, so Sherry Ann's on camera, we're seeing her while she talks. Then we cut, now she's in voiceover and we're showing these pictures. I feel like this is almost easier to read and write than like the full page perhaps. video edit. Yeah, perhaps. It's, uh, it, it should, you know, become pretty second nature. Uh, and corporate videos are written this way too. Anything kind of audio visual with a video track as well as an audio, uh, you know, two columns is the way it goes. These indications are specific to news, but we can talk about any differences that come out um, once, once we're doing this. So, uh, like a package that a bow socked. This, this script here is a, is a package. Okay. Yeah, there, there is an example of a Vosat higher up, uh, but it's, um, it's not left justified, which is a problem from getting this in from, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, insight. Justified. Yeah, you see uh, how everything is centered here? Uh -huh. It shouldn't be centered. So I need to correct all that. Plus everything's in a weird variety of fonts. But again, this so this one is a Vosat. As you can see, we have the anchor on camera. It switches to voiceover with the sound under. And at a certain point, we go to SOT, SOT McDonald, right? So, and over here we know sound full, Hal McDonald, utility manager. Super is when you see their name appear supered under them. Uh, so that's the other thing. JP? It should be double spaced. Uh, it should be like this. Is this double spaced? Oh, single space? Yeah, okay. these ones are, yeah. So wait, what, is, what did you just say about the super? Super is what? Uh, when you want to handle super is when you have a, what Misha would call a lower third in the, in the video. When you see somebody, where the heck is, uh, do I have some here? Uh, when you see somebody talking and it, they're identified here, uh -huh. that's called a super. Some places will call it a chiron. But it's basically the lower third of the screen is given over to writing somebody's name. And that's who's... That's who's talking, right? That makes a difference in terms of uh, you, unlike radio where you have to attribute in advance, you know, facilities manager Hal Jordan told us the water's rising rapidly, you know. Uh, well, now you can just say uh, the water's rising rapidly and you cut to Hal Jordan and his name appears under, under here, facilities manager Hal Jordan. So using a super makes attribution a little easier in, a, in, in television. Because you can just show people's names rather than actually saying, you know what I mean? With, with the, so the command super basically is, is well, let's, let's look at the, the assignment that I've cooked up for you because it also will just kind of explain this further, I think. Where is that assignment here? Vosat script. Uh, oh yeah, and we're in student view, awesome. So uh, in this one, um, I give you uh, the facts, and I give you video and a story and the facts of what happened there and even the sound bites of what was said on the video, okay? So your job is to write a Vosat based on this, 45 seconds only. So it's gonna be pretty tight. So first off, it just says, you know, remind yourself of what is a Vosat. So you remember the Vosat will start on the anchor talk. There's no reporter. There's no, hi, this is me reporting live. There's none of that, right? It's just the anchor talking. So today, uh, you know, National Guard, uh, police officers and security trainees conducted a, uh, you know, a simulation of an active shooter event at a local high school, you know. Then cut to the VO part. Now we're seeing pictures of people running around the high school while you continue. This was a routine drill, but they do it every year to make sure they're prepared for the worst if it should ever happen, right? And da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And then 
Now we're going to get to the SOT with police chief, what's his name, who's going to talk to us, OK? So that's the structure you have to have. His name is David Azuelo. That's what you have to write, OK? The anchor starts talking. Then you cut to voiceover pictures. You have to choose your pictures from this video. I'll show it to you in a second. Brief descriptions of the pictures on the left-hand side, left column. Plus, you're talking the whole way through. And at some point, you get to Azuelo on camera, who does his SOT. And then you come back very briefly to VO as you finish the story. You know? So let me show you the package of uh, the, the, video, um, the video material that's up here. Okay? It's flipped and stuff because it's on YouTube and it's copyrighted material. So this is exactly what a videographer, like a field camera person, go, would bring go, back. Go, 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 go. Possibilities, that's why they shot these. Fake blood. Fake hostages. The shooter is down. Class that goes through the Tucson Police Department undergo. Right. So once you've shot, so by the way, that all that stuff is called B-roll. Okay. All of this is is referred to as B-roll. It's the pictures that are in this. Now, now you've got you know your interview, your SOT. Every police recruit class that goes through the Tucson Police Department undergoes active shooter training, and we've been doing this ever since Columbine. So it's nothing new. Uh, we do this for every police academy recruit that goes through, and then periodically we do a refresher for the entire police department. Now, why is it important to have this type of training for officers? It's extremely, this is very different from the normal duties that they carry out. So we're really preparing them for the worst case scenario that they could see, and that is an active shooter in, for example, an elementary school. So for us, it's very important to prepare the officers both physically and mentally to respond to a situation such as an active shooter. In this case, pushing all of the ancillary issues such as the victims, the, the location, all of the chaos that ensues in an active shooter environment, teaching them to go directly to the threat, stop that person from killing anyone, and then be able to compress the period of time it takes to render aid to the victims who are already, already hurt. Okay, there you go. So uh, that that would be very typically what you would get back from a camera crew and reporter going out to that type of event to report on it. You get a lot of you know. I picked this because there's a certain amount of interesting visuals. It's it's exciting a little bit, uh, and so. Uh, you you get a lot of what's called B-roll, the pictures of everybody doing stuff, and then at the end you get the interview, which is the basis for your SOT. And obviously the interview was like two minutes long. You're only picking one very short soundbite out of that interview. Okay, so again, you're you're not there to play the entire interview and put pictures on top of it. 
you're the reporter. I mean, you're the, you're the anchor. You're supposed to be saying this while we see pictures and then get a very brief sound bite from Captain Azuelo about this. Jenny? And just so I'm clear, the, the package, not that we're doing the package for the upcoming assignment, but the right. package would be the anchor and to introduce the reporter and then the reporter. Right, and the reporter would actually be there versus what we've been seeing as a VOSOT is just the anchor sitting behind the desk and telling us the story. Is, is there a variance in that, in a package, whereas yeah. there, like yeah, not we, necessarily yeah. an anchor would have to introduce the reporter? It, well, it, the, no. anchor, the anchor almost always introduces the reporter, but it's also possible for the anchor to do an extended VOSOT and then hand it off to a reporter. So you you know there's the, the these story types actually fluidly interconnect on the actual news broadcast, but uh, but most of the time they will you know now uh, you know more news from Napa today and so and so is on site and then you go to so and so and they're talking okay. so the package usually is introduced that way, but it can all be you know knitted together in some cases, right? Okay, but uh, I'm going to give you further help. Let's start trying to write one of these ourselves, all right? The V-O-S-O-T, based on what this assignment is. Can we open this up? So please pay attention, because I know this is a little bit complicated. It's, uh, uh, some folks will have you know, a, a perfect idea of what the structure has to be right away, and they care just about whether you're dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Other people, it's like, well, what the hell is this? How do I do this? So, so let's try to, first of all, um, the way I do them, and I suggest you do them either in Google Docs or in Word or whatever word processor you have, is uh, I would insert a table. Um, and uh, so you need two columns, right? And I just put a whole bunch of rows in. I never know how many this will take, right? So I'm going to go OK. And uh, up here, just to remind myself of what I need, I'm going to say video, and I'm going to say audio, right? And um, then I'm already on my way, all right? And I can, of course, I can hide this eventually. I don't really care if you hide it or not, but if you, if you care, you can hide the, the grid, basically. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is the anchor is going to be talking. So we're going to write anchor, you know, uh, and we'll go on cam. Uh, and then, uh, you know, well, what do we say? What's our lead? You know, well, remember our lead should probably be a summary, right? And so, uh, uh, it could be earlier today, uh, uh, first responders and police cadets trained for, uh, you know, uh, uh, the worst. An, uh, an active, okay, trained for an active, uh, sh well, trained uh, to Hostage defend, situation? defend a school from an active shooter or something like this. Yours could be completely different, right? But all I'm trying to say is we want to, we want to have this. Um, uh, it's uh, an annual event. Um, annual event. It's an annual event and uh, so on and so forth involving volunteers uh, who pretend Wow. You get shot. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Making really light of this. It's Pardon right. me. Well, it's just a bunch. The video is just a bunch of cops shooting each other with paintballs. It's yeah, exactly. If you just showed the video, none of this will make any sense. It's also uh, sloppy. If you show it on the news, people start calling the station, going, "What school is that? I'm afraid my kid's being killed," and you'll be set up for a scandal. I'd say something like that. So watch out. Um, anchor on cam and so at a certain point you're going to go to VO and so here you're going to start writing b-roll of what you see. Uh, so this is where you go back to the YouTube video if I can find it. There it is. You start, you decide what pictures you want. You're telling a little visual narrative. Do you want to start with what appears there? Like somebody say screaming, hey, hey, come in. 
Or you could start, I might as an editor start with uh, some of the NAT sounds that they gave us. Where are they? You know, just zoom through and try to find them. There's a broken window, there's an alarm going beep, beep, beep. So, you know, run through this a few times. There you go. So I might start with it. Then I might go to this. Okay, you don't have to write the sound of what she says, but you just say, you know. Uh, Woman on alerts police to a shooting. Right, something like that. Yeah, you know, so, so where am I typing this in? So B-roll, siren, blares. You know, next up. When we write B-roll, uh, that's us police. writing Nat sound? Nat sound would be over here in this side, so yeah, I think you write Nat sound and then siren. siren. Because I'm seeing it as well as hearing it, right? So you're right, Jenny. I'd probably write siren blares here and uh, siren on wall or something like that. So these are just the, I'm, I'm just trying to emphasize don't write, you know, any novelistic descriptions down here. You just write them pretty quick, right? And, uh, and you go through uh, the tape looking for, okay, I'm trying to tell a visual story. How can I do this, you know? Um, right, now we're gonna wanna inject a little more information in here too, you know? So again, this is my first draft. It may not be uh, <clears throat> everything that I want to start with, but um, let me see, I'm gonna keep on, and let me move this probably down here and this up here. VO, and then, uh, you know, I'm going to say um, it's a challenging, I, you know, you, this could be very different depending on how you do it. It's a challenging drill because um, they have to forget about all the chaos and noise, etc. cetera. Um, they use uh, rubber bullets and blanks to simulate real firearms. And here I might put a, sorry JP, in just a sec, I might put a close up of bullets because I have that in my video too. Hey, right? uh, over here, where are my bullets? I got a, well, there they are, the bullet shot as I noticed there. So uh, that's an interesting point. But let's first, what did you, what did you want to ask JP? So when we write our facts, we can use the facts on the, assignment yeah so exactly right um, so when I look through the assignment it says here but let me make this bigger for you folks who are sitting here um, oh god I can't there we go there we go. so here are the facts that you can select from for the story that doesn't mean you can copy paste this but it's pretty close because you you, you know you're using the same names, you're using the same places, and you only have 45 seconds to tell this story, which is the typical time of a Bosad is 45. So there are police officer trainees, National Guard troops, marshals, active shooter. They use paintball bullets. Whoops. Okay, I'll fix that. The goal was to simulate conditions at a school facing an armed intruder. Material 27, etc. Well, these are the notes from the reporter in the field. Then I also made your life really easy by transcribing what Captain Azuelo says in his SOT, okay? So this is the full text of what he says uh, here, right? I just wrote it out. So in this case, you can paraphrase part of what he says and pick what you feel is the best SOT to put in there. So, you know, you might want him to talk very procedurally, say, you know, in this case, pushing all the ancillary, uh, that may not be the best one. Uh, here we go, teaching them to go directly to the threat, stop that person, and okay, that sounds pretty good. And very often you'll find, by the way, the ends of SOTs wind up to have the most significant information. So anyhow, if I were to copy this and it put this in as my SOT now. Again, this is all really rough. Obviously, you're going to take more time. And where the f is my doc? There it is. OK, so at a certain point, I'm going to go SOT as Wello, because that's his name. And uh, I'm going to just paste this in here. Um, 
right? And let me move this down here. Um, and I'm going to put, uh, for instance, uh, um, police told us that uh, there's a real uh, science to this. There, you know, something like that. Uh, that could, again, I could, you should polish that up, make that a little bit better. Geez, can I do better on the fly, guys? <laughs> like a but, uh, local, instead of police, say a local cop. So, uh, yeah, sure. And uh, here you're going to want to write voice. super, right? And uh, this would be Captain David, I think. You know, again, go to what I gave you. Uh, and where is he here? Uh, Captain David as well of the Tucson PD, right? So go back and uh, paste it. And, uh, and then you know, a slash. Something like that, maybe, or yeah, slash. I don't know how we, you know, the, your your station would have particular guidelines about it, but yeah, Tucson PD. I think we could leave PD. All right. So this is, uh, so the main thing is we know that here's the SOT part, right? And then at the end we go back to VO, and uh, you know um, we see. Uh, you know, here I might go uh, look through again for a picture to end this on where things appear, you know, a little bit calmer or crazier. Or, you know, for some of you who have bloodlust, you'll want to see the shooter actually fall down there. <laughs> Nike, I do. <laughs> I, I do it. You could show the shooter falling down. I don't know what, you know, what would be an appropriate end to it. And here the videographer gave us some stuff, but this was just more of the extras. You know, and every videographer will also, you notice there's the interview, but there's Already. also, there's a tiny bit of the interview subject, because you know, if you are gonna do uh, attribution, like, you know, if, if you wrote it such that, you know, Captain David Azuelo shares this with us, you're gonna need to show Azuelo, but not have him talking. So these, these tiny little clips of, uh, the interview subject in action can be useful there for your edit. You, for instance, you'll show him milling about like that, and then you'll start the SOT where he says what you want him to say. So that's the reason that that's in there. So you pick your best final shot. Nika, does, was there something in chat or something? I, I'm, I'm checking something. Oh, okay. Cool. So let, me, let me know. So she says the formatting link is broken. Uh, yeah, there's probably a bunch there, but the, the one that I've been showing you today, coming through, if you go to the assignment, and if you click on this one, so this one is the one I'm showing you today, okay? Uh, but there's probably another one in there, because I usually put links everywhere. Here it is again. So I need to update this one as well. So yeah, that one's broken. So that one's broken, but we're using the first one, right? Yeah, I'll fix the second one, and I'll left justify whatever's necessary in the first one. Now I know what I'm going to be doing this afternoon after class. So there you go. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Can you go back to the Microsoft? Uh, OK, to the example that we're putting together. Yes. Uh, come on, Doc. What's up, Doc? There it is. Uh, OK. okay. Okay, as I said, some people will be um, row below. Here we go. Yo, siren on the wall. Okay. That's it. Siren blares. There we go. B roll. That looks a little better. Um, okay, cool. Siren on the wall. Go in there, SOT. Um, so the places where you need to take particular care is in, you know, setting up your SOT just like you did in the radio wrap, setting up your actuality in radio, setting up your SOT. Right now, this is not very good. Police told us that there's a real science to this. And then Azuelo comes in saying, teaching them to go directly to the threat, to stop that person from killing everyone, anyone, or something like that. So, um, you know, police, uh, police have to move quickly 
to um, to respond. Just any, even something like that. Or nope, still doesn't work. Uh, police told us that cadets have a lot to learn. Something like this. <laughs> it's a tough SOT. Yeah, maybe. We could help ourselves like that. Still not very good, but that's why this will take you three hours instead of 15 minutes. No quotes. And so finally, with your, you know, at the end, uh, you could say um, um, you're just trying to wrap up the story. So you could go back and look for facts, right? Or you could. Okay, so you could simply say, uh, you know, so uh, all recruits are required to do the training so that they're prepared for the worst. Okay, something like that. And here we would have uh, B roll. Long shot, yeah, B roll, long shot of, uh, of uh, cadets around something like that you know you do the best as, as an editor you, you're trying to pick the best stuff but that's it so the main thing is no lockout here right there's no there's no uh, this is so and so so and so reporting for KCBS or something because they just go on to the next story you know we've been seeing uh, on camera this cadet standing around so the next item up would go back to the anchor and we'd see the anchor in the studio Okay, and uh, like I said, you can you can leave the the framework around here. You can leave the the table if you want, or you can hide it if you want. And just try to clear it up, clean it up. All right, too many of these. And we don't have to have the total runtime for each of them. No. Okay. Not in these. Yeah. Good question though. But then how do you time yourself? Just read it out. Uh, and how long should these be? 45 seconds. OK. That's the typical length of these. Oops. Let's see. I think there's something written in here about, remember, chapter 10. We'll, we'll look at this next class. <clears throat> yeah, OK. Well, here's a really good point, OK? Even in the little script that I wrote, where is it here? Um, now that you're telling a story both visually and what audibly verbally right you have the opportunity to slavishly state everything you see on camera so you could as, as soon as you get into vo you could be say and here we see a woman calling for the police she's panicking police flood into the building it's dark there's lots of noise it's, that's not the way we write it correct because Audio and video are complementary. Most of the time, there are two stories being told side by side, right? You pick the points where you actually need to reinforce something. Like I picked this point, where in audio we hear they use rubber bullets. Well, in fact, it was paint bullets and stuff. And then I actually show a close-up of it. So it's OK once in a while to say what it is that you see, OK? But not all the time. That's, that's just redundant writing. If we're seeing it and it's clearly enough shown to us, we don't need to hear it at the same time. Once in a while, you will want to match stuff up. And I think it's a good idea for you guys to think about and maybe watch some news once in a while and think about, OK, why did they actually show a, explicitly a close up or something like that? You know, um, that kind of like wall to wall, like wallpaper news, like we're showing burning fires and we're talking for five minutes because we got nothing else to do here at Cron. You know, that's, <laughs> that, that, that happens a lot, right? So that's, that's very redundant. But if you're talking about writing a well crafted 45 second or we'll talk two minute package at another point, you know, there, there, more art goes into that, you know? And by the way, these are usually written now by someone sitting in their car who's gone out with the camera person, just writing it down and then typing it into their phone. 
last semester when we went to KTVU, I was, you know, in the edit booth, you saw the reporter, you know, they were rolling, they were rolling on her as she was reading off her voiceover and stuff, and then sending it all in, the text just was sent from her phone and stuff. So that was basically her production tool was a smartphone. And then there was the camera operator who had shot the video, but that was also sent by a, a, you know, a wireless like, mobile uplink. And so they were editing it all that way. So it was pretty cool. Uh, but to stick to the writing part, so yeah, you, you know, you probably, you can either identify the captain in the super, or you could also, here you could say, you know, uh, Captain Azuelo told us that his recruits have, uh, you know, a lot to learn in front of them today or something like that. And then you can write it, then you don't necessarily have to super it. But supering is fun, so go for it. Super is what again? Uh, that's the, what's called a lower third. It's oh, right, right, right. Thank right? You. Yeah. Uh, when I say a lower third, let's just show you a picture. So these are, oh, there you go, Jimmy Wales, uh, images, lower thirds, there, yeah, look, look how many of these are. Because <laughs> okay. the character at generators, you know, when you work for a station or whatever, you guys will do this in the After Effects class, you make up your customized, you know, lower thirds here, <coughs> and you store them so that during the newscast, they type in what actually has to go on them, but they have all of the animations, all of the stuff already in, in, the, in memory. So they, they all go there. In fact, <clears throat> the, the newscast is now controlled by one person with uh, uh, like an incredible like automated console in front of them with all these. And, and every, everything that happens is programmed in in advance. So there's, there's so no longer have, like. They have a mixer. Yeah, it's a, it's a video mixer, but it's, it's a digital with all these macros built in. And the, the guy sits there just pushing buttons. And he's typed in the whole show before, including which microphones come up, which sets they're on. All of that is, is already included. You know? But we're just taking it from the, you know, each individual little news story. They pack them all together and then set the show up like that every night. Anyhow, so how many people have, or do you have, or you should have questions about just this little thing that we were doing here? Just this is the way I would, you know, start to do it. And this is due Thursday. This is due next Tuesday, so you have a week to do this for 45 seconds. And uh, you know, the other thing is, um, uh, uh, should the video description be that long or longer? Not longer than this, okay. you know, unless, you know, what's necessary is if, if there's some, no, that's enough. Okay. Yeah. You know, typically what happens is the, um, the reporter has seen the file and is sending in time, time you know, it's uh, at 16 minutes, 12 seconds, take this shot or something like that. But we can't do that. So, you know, you just describe what it is you want. That's what I was thinking. Like, it, they you don't have time to actually okay. come and script all of this. You know, okay. from the field, you would be writing all this to send it in, basically, and then giving them time, time references for what to cut, and the editor would be back at the station doing it. Yeah. Just a formatting question. So, looking at the PDF example in the assignment, it looks like the script portion is in all caps, the right column. Yeah. But I was just wondering about the left column. Like, there's so, parentheses here, it's lowercase. I just wanted to make sure that's the format. Yes, yes. So, we should switch all this to uh, all caps, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I hope this is fun. And again, you know, uh, apart from the understandably, like, how should we format this and everything. You know, the, where this becomes, uh, how could I say it? You know, wh where it takes creativity and thought and where you get better at it is, is not only in, you know, transitioning from this to VO to SOTs or stuff. That's an important place. How do you transition there? You notice I'm still ditzing with it. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, again, you've got a video track, you've got an audio track. How do they complement each other? That's the thing, you know. Again, in audio, you're trying to write as, you know, concrete, simply active sentences, conversational, but also, you know, evocative. And at the same time, you got the chance to show pictures 
And there is the possibility of, you know, commenting on a picture or not. You know, uh, a lot of times you're just getting information out there and it's boring information, so you're just showing something. That's basic news, that's okay, but sometimes there can be an interesting interaction between what you're saying and what you're seeing. You know, that's, that's why I picked this one with a lot of action. And the last thing I'll say, I'll just leave you guys to think this, but you, you know, uh, the other thing is remember you're writing for an audience that is basically distracted, right? This is one of the questions on the exam. Do we write for people who are really paying attention? No. So uh, in this case, you may want to consider, again, how upset your audience might be to see a local school with a bunch of cops running around and guns going off and stuff like that. You know, uh, the audience who wasn't paying any attention might think this is real. So I, I, you should think about how to, uh, how to, you know, deal with that in your script as well. Because you, know? you could scare the heck out of some people, especially older viewers. And stuff. And now they're watching. Yeah. Now they're watching. Yeah. So they, they, they can tune they're in and realize problems. it's Watching is good. F phoning the station and complaining is not good. Right? It's a fine line. So let's just. All right. So uh, again, we're here for a minute or two more for more questions. And we should check chat. There's nothing. There's nothing. Cool. Well, I mean, Nika brings up a good idea. Yes, you're, you're writing for largely an audience that is not paying attention. And yes, certainly they could be, like you mentioned, they could be calling and, well, why are you showing this? It's not real. But No, no, it's not that they don't think it's real. It's like, where is this happening? My God, my grandchildren go right, to school. That's, that's what what are you doing? <laughs> okay. So, like, it, how would you, what, would you put it in the super, like, drill? You could. Or you could, you could put it in the anchor, the first thing he starts to say. That'd be another way, right? There, so there are ways, but I think you'd want to put that in there at least once, so that you could say, "Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, that you did weren't, you know, you didn't catch it, but we did say at the start of the story that it, it was, was a, a yeah, exactly." Okay. You know. okay. Hang up. <laughs> can, can we like put the slug? So, are you telling us we should put the slug and the location in? A okay. Room? Yeah. Good point. My goodness. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's very good, very good. So slug would be just like the radio, so it would be um, school training, so I don't know, whatever, training day. Uh, so, and uh, what comes up next? Location. It's a, the lo Really, it's a location, yeah? I like Not a slug, what, I'm talking, what I mean by location, what, I mean, the lower third, Keep the going. super was, the okay. super, what I meant by the super was the, the slug, like, and then the location, like you see, like a crown four, like. Uh, gotcha. Well, like so we wouldn't. Our train open. Let's let's keep the word slug out of that because it's. Um, yeah. So we for the slug is uh, the title, the reporter, the total runtime. So, um, but you're saying uh, so there's a title, reporter, and, then, and total runtime TRT, forty five, and then. Uh, no, but. What okay, now the, here, yes, you want to ask about the super. The soup, what I meant by the super, we could add another one before this one, saying like the, slug, the title and then the location. The title of what though? So, like, uh, like school, like school. Oh, I see. And then the location. So, and so you would put it here, like as soon as yeah. you went to VO or something? Yeah. I got it. Okay, well, go ahead if you want. That you don't see that very often, but that doesn't mean you couldn't try and do it. So it would be super. Uh, you know, what would it be? I don't know. Like Tucson Elementary or something. Or school train. Or just put Tucson. Okay, like, but that that wouldn't help us know if it was real or not, right? Okay. Yeah, Tucson yeah. Elementary. <laughs> well, you should put that after like school training. And then Tucson. Gotcha. Elementary. Training. Okay, let's put that there. It's you know it's it's pretty marginal this, but it, it could be done definitely. Okay. You, know, you could see that. You could see that. So, but you know again, you're there to serve the audience, not to scare them. And uh, again, for those who think it's funny, sure it's funny if you do a good job. If you do a lousy job, it's just a lousy job. So, 
if you want to be funny, then do a great job and we'll all laugh, okay? <laughs> so that's the thing. All right, I'm good, 245. <laughs> and we can, you know, we'll talk package next class and it's like an extension of this, so this may get more clear next class.